So in this video, we're going to give a brief introduction to the Gibbs free energy. Mostly here, we just want to motivate it. We have already introduced the first law of thermodynamics, so we can have E for internal energy, kind of a sloppy E there, but it is equal to T delta S minus P delta V. And notice here, uh, compared to the video that we discussed earlier about the internal energy, we're going to use the engineering convention where this is uh, work done by a system. So when a work uh, is, is done by a system, then that decreases the total energy of the system. And that's going to work out a little bit better with showing how we derive the Gibbs free energy. So instead of the delta notation where we have a uh, fixed change and measurable change between energy and entropy and volume, we're going to use D for an infinitesimal change. So we can write this in uh, differential notation where we have DE is equal to TDS minus PDV. So instead of a finite measurable difference in energy and entropy and volume, we have this infinitesimal change in energy, which is related to infinitesimal changes in entropy and volume. And that very description leads to the heart of why we might want to look at different kinds of functions. So at equilibrium, the change in energy should go to zero. This the energy in a system uh, should stop changing at equilibrium. But here, to define equilibrium, we're looking at changes in entropy and volume. And those are not necessarily easy things to measure. Maybe we could have a rigid container with fixed walls of a fixed size that don't move uh, and we could try to establish the entropy in, uh, inside that little box and figure out what, how it might change. But there's another way to look at energy, and it was developed by Hosiah Willard Gibbs. He was not so bold as to call it uh, G or the Gibbs free energy, but that's what we've been calling it ever since. And so we'll use G for this new form of energy. And notice that we're going to use three lines instead of two. We're going to define the Gibbs free energy. We're we're going to make up a new function, and we're going to say it's equal to u. So that's the e in our previous diagram. So e and u are really the same thing, and they represent the internal energy of the system. I'm going to write u because you'll see this in a lot of derivations. So it's u plus pv minus ts. So this is so-called integrated form. If we take the differential form, then an infinitesimal change in dg would be equal to uh, the similar magnitude of change in du plus PDV plus VDP. So this is the differential form of that. And then minus TDS minus SDT. No, notice we just kind of reverse the variables and put Ds in front of them. And that gives us the total differential. But we have already shown that DU is equal to TDS minus PDV. And now you can see why we use the engineering convention, convention of work done by the system. That positive PDV will cancel out with that minus PDV. This positive TDS cancels out with that minus TDS. And so we end up with DG is equal to VDP minus SDT. And notice how handy this is. Now we have a way of establishing equilibrium. So equilibrium will be the case when the change in energy is zero, where we define this in terms of changes in volume and temperature. Those things are much easier to attack. Uh, if we use a statistics, a statistical way of talking about var variables, we can rewrite this VDP minus SDT. So the DG, the G is the dependent variable. And then this is what we would refer to as an independent variable. And then dt is also an independent variable. So the, the handy way of thinking about this is, let's say we are standing here on Earth's surface and we are interested in something that's happening down here. Let's place an x, uh, marks the spot. This is some point of interest below the Earth. And we might want to know what kinds of chemical reactions might take place and, and when and how they would approach equilibrium. It would be much easier to define the pressure and temperature of this system and think about how the energy might be minimized in that respect rather than trying to isolate some fixed volume and think about the entropy changes. So this simply takes 
the energy changes and translates them into variables that are easier to control in the lab. We could do experiments where we fix the pressure and fix the temperature, and so we can look at how that might affect DG as we do experiments at different pressures and temperatures, or as we look at natural systems in the Earth, and then whether it's on the surface or deep in the Earth, uh, or even in the atmosphere, we could think about changes in temperature and pressure and how those affect the energy of the system. So DG is related to DU, uh, uh, but it represents a different kind of energy. It's an energy that is minimized um, <clears throat> when we uh, have constant pressure or constant temperature. Or another way to think about, about it, maybe the easiest way to think about it, is it goes to zero uh, as we go to constant pressure and constant temperature. If there's no change in pressure, then dp is zero. And if there's no change in temperature, then dt also goes to zero. And when those goes, go to zero, then those terms drop out, then dg is zero, and that's when we have equilibrium in a system. So the Gibbs free energy is simply a more convenient way uh, of thinking about identifying equilibrated systems uh, in, when looking at uh, Earth and geologic purposes.